my god. Oh my god. If I die, I'm a MX vs. ATV legend. I am the one. What's up, my dudes? Okay, boys. Let's get into this right here, dudes. Oh, man. We got a lot to unpack here with Legends. I've been playing it for like a day straight. Okay. So... Let's just get right to the point. What does the game actually feel like? What does the physics feel like, right? I feel like that's what most people are interested in. So, as you guys know, every time there's a new motocross game that comes out, I have to try to find all these different ways to explain to the viewer, you, <laughs> uh, how the game actually feels, right? And one of the best ways I know to do that is to compare to other motocross games that maybe you have played before, right? You got to have that reference to even really explain anything. So, what MX versus ATV Legends feels like is if you mixed MX versus ATV All Out with the first official Monster Energy Supercross game, and you sprinkled a little bit of mud, the official motocross game, on top of that, right? <laughs> I know that sounds insane, but just follow me here, okay? It's like you mixed All Out, the first Supercross game, and mud. Just imagine all those different physics systems. If all three of them came together and had a baby... That's Legends. <laughs> That's pretty much what it is, man. Um, super arcadey feeling. If any of you guys remember kind of the way the ground physics felt in the first official Monster Energy Supercross game, like how easy it was to corner and how arcadey it was in the corners. That's exactly how Legends feels. It just kind of feels like um, the cornering and movement on the ground is... is very arcadey. We're talking like super duper arcadey, bro. Um, the cornering is not difficult at all. Anybody can do it. Your grandma can do it, right? But the difference is with Legends is it actually has a pop-off system, whereas the very first official Monster Energy Supercross game didn't even have a pop-off system. You could overjump anything, underjump anything as bad as you possibly wanted to, and you would never pop off the bike. So, even though Legends kind of has that super arcadey, easy, the game almost plays itself for you in the corners and on the ground, the jumping and landing and popping off is an entirely different story, right? That's where all your skill gap comes from, even on the motocross tracks, uh, surprisingly really is all your leaning and your jumping and um that's really about it man i mean the roughness is not going to do a whole lot to you um and the craziest part is is the the spinning out uh, power sliding mechanic that has been added to this game is so arcadey to the point where it really wouldn't even matter if there was all that many ruts in the corners or not. You know, with with that more like mud, you know, first official Monster City Supercross game, super arcadey feel, that ass end's going to slide in and out of ruts like they're not even there, even if they are there. That's how it, it's got this interesting like point and shoot sort of mechanic when you're on the gas and then you're on the brake and then you're back on the gas simultaneously in the corners right and that's exactly how i remember the first supercross game being so it's literally like you've took the cornering of the first supercross game and mixed it with the air physics of all out and the gravitational pull of the mud game right it's kind of like you mixed all those things together in that particular way. Uh, MX for ZTV and Milestone are definitely 100% bro sharing some shit. 
<laughs> there's no doubt about it, dude. There's no doubt about it, dude, right? Like three or four years ago or whatever, they, you know, all that information came out saying that, you know, THQ Nordic and uh, Milestone are under the same parent company. And then ever since then, the Milestone games have started to feel a little bit more like the MX vs. ATV games. And then now the MX vs. ATV game starts to feel a little more like the Milestone games in a way. So there, there really is no mistaking that. But what, what makes this game very different than a Milestone game is the pop-off system to it. Specifically, if you're talking about Supercross 5, that's one of the things that basically for me personally, has killed that game for me is the fact that there pretty much is no pop-off system. You can't really pop off. No matter how big you under-jump, over-jump, jump to the moon, whatever you want to do, you're not going to pop off on Supercross 5. So it eliminates a lot of the fun factor, fear. Ooh, can I jump that big-ass 420-foot jump or am I going to crack my sack? Like, you know what I mean? But if there's no chance of cracking your sack kind of loses some of that fun factor, right? But, surprisingly, with uh, MX vs. ATV Legends, they it seems like they've put a lot of work into this landing mechanic and this pop-off system. There definitely is a pop-off system, and that adds, you know, quite a level of skill gap and some of the bigger jumps in the game. It really gives you that feeling... Something about this game totally captures that feeling of hitting a big jump, right? It's the way the camera moves, the gravitational pull, the default camera in the game I'm talking about, right? When you hit a big enough jump in the game for the first time, I mean, it's definitely an experience, bro. Like, it for sure is, without a doubt. Like, dog, telling you right now. Telling you right now, bro. <laughs> so... So let me just get this out here right here before I start getting too deep into this physics system. So first of all, be sure and go follow me up on Instagram. Switcher totally no spaces and no capital letters. You already know what it is, bro. Had to put that in here. You know, you know, Spency boy. <laughs> um, so I bought the game on Steam for like 30 something dollars. Okay, there was some sort of special deal going on somehow on the first day that Legends comes out on Steam, which I think already on top of that, it's cheaper on Steam than like, you know, in disc form, you know, like PS5 and shit like that. But I'm not 100% sure on all that. I'm just saying I bought the game for like 30 something dollars, like 35 or something like that. And I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to go ahead and say this. The game is worth the 30-something dollars. If you can get it for the 30-something dollars, it's worth it 100%. No question about it. It's worth that for sure, okay? So, yes, there is times, and don't get my words twisted, <laughs> you know. Even if I'm saying some positive things about it, yes, there is certainly still times in this game where the physics are going to literally damn near feel like you're playing a mobile dirt bike game, okay? It's going to get so arcadey, unrealistic e to a point to where it literally, you feel like it could be a mobile motocross game's physics system. That does happen on an occasion in this game, but... The game is fun, dude. <laughs> the game is fun, dude. Okay? Even though it does have some arcadey vibes to it, um, I still think there's something here. There's something here. It's, it's impressing me more than I thought it was going to, right? Um, maybe I just started to lower my expectations a lot just from seeing a lot of that early gameplay, but... Um, and you guys remember me telling you about a little thing like uh, everything kind of changes sometimes whenever you get the controller actually in your hands and you're not just talking about gameplay and, you know, everybody else's opinions on it and things like that, but you actually get the controller and you play the motherfucking game, right? I feel like this game feels more realistic than it looks, okay? That's a massive aspect right there. 
feels more realistic when you're actually playing it than it looks. It looks damn near silly, right? Let's just keep it real. The the sliding around mechanic and the, I mean, it, you know, there's aspects of it visually that just look like a mobile silly ass dirt bike game. But there has been some effort and work put into this to limit and restrict certain elements of uh, uh, all outs physics system, right? That's basically what the whip system is on Legends is it's just like MX vs. ATV all out. It's just a little bit more restricted. Um, so, but the other elements of the physics, it's, it's weird. It's kind of like you've mixed like the first Supercross games easiness of like getting around the track, but with the next level of track design and bigger jump design and not trying to be so one-to-one -one scaling hyper-realistic with MX vs. ATV sort of, you know, piece to this entire puzzle, right? So you get that, like, easiness of Supercross 1 in a sense, but then it makes it harder because it's got the bigger jumps and you can pop off the bike, you know, with the more MX vs. ATV all-out kind of feeling with it. You know, it was kind of like I was saying before the game came out. I didn't think this was going to save the day. I didn't think Legends was going to, you know, be some super amazing thing. But I certainly think it could be, you know, a thirst quencher for some of you guys that have been really tired of the Milestone games and you don't really play MX Sim or MX Bikes. You've not really had anything else to play on console. I feel like it, if uh, if you can get it for the in like the thirty dollar range, anything under forty dollars, I definitely think it's worth it. That's what it was on Steam for me. The just the base version of the game was like thirty something dollars, thirty five dollars or something like that. So if you can get it under forty bucks, I totally think it's worth it. Um, just to play through the content, you know what I mean. Go to all the all the different tracks. Um, it's got like invitational style tracks. It's got these straight rhythm motocross type tracks in there. Um, yeah, even though the game is super arcadey and super fake feeling, you know what I mean? They're, they, they definitely went a little bit overboard with that. Um, there's just no doubt about it. And there's this weird... A lot of weird momentum bug glitchy feelings to the game, um, at least on the PC version of the game. Sometimes when you're like going up a hill or you're going in a certain area, the bike will just almost come to a complete stop. Even when you're wide open, there's like something weird going on with the the momentum of the bike itself where it where sometimes where you should have momentum, you don't have any at all. You know what I mean? And that kind of kills the immersion. And when it's got that real point and shoot um, sort of movement in the corners and kind of that drifting a car feeling in the corners, you know, it can definitely break the immersion. Kind of feels like, like you're playing more of a silly mobile style, you know, motocross game or something like that. It can definitely kind of give you that feeling, but it's it's got that, you know, that mountain bikey slide your ass in around the trails going down the mountain <laughs> you know it's kind of got it's like a different kind of a motocross game feeling which is uh super interesting uh but i can definitely see how this game is not going to be for everybody you know um you gotta love big daddy jumping you gotta love that that wide open big jumps um air time if you're one of those kind of guys where you, you were thinking this was going to be like a lot of roughness and bike reaction and having to really slow down and pick your ruts and pick your lines and shit and, and dig into that rut in the corner, the physics don't even really work that way, man. You know, it, it's not how reflex is on those super rutted, you know, custom tracks and stuff. It's not like that at all. I mean, I don't think the game is terrible. But I also don't think it's amazing at all. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, it's like average. <laughs> it's like an average motocross game. That's what I would call Legends. It's it's average. You know, um, is it better than Supercross Five? 
Uh, I feel like if Supercross 5 had the content of Legends and it also had the pop-off system of Legends, Supercross 5 would be better. But, you know, Legends does have those crucial things like content, big jumps, fun factor, pop-off system. You know, it's got a couple of these, like, really crucial fucking things to it. Even though the physics are weird AF and glitchy and buggy and bizarre feeling, it's got a couple of core critical things that's kind of holding it together a little bit, right? Um, it definitely has that trialsy landing kind of feeling. Okay, so let's move along to the graphics of the game. Basically what that is, is it's the rider model and the bike look identical to All Out's graphics, but the actual dirt and some of the really far off track like vistas and canyons and shit like that, right? The Grand Canyons, bro. That's the part that I feel like has actually been elevated and looks better than All Out did. But as far as the way the like the gear and the 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 rider model itself, that shit looks literally copy and pasted. So, yeah. Overall, though, I mean, I definitely think the trail mode is cool. The, this whole game gave me a vibe like like the old school <laughs> fucking like PS One level motocross games I used to play back in the day. Couldn't even tell you the names of half of them. Um, really gave me that feeling of just like riding on tracks that aren't really like a full-blown motocross track, but they're kind of like a trail track mixed with the motocross track, and you're just like out in the desert, you know, halfway free riding, halfway trail riding, halfway motocrossing on these random ass you know, tracks, you don't know where you're going, it was kind of cool like that, it had a cool little vibe to it like that, and having like the special areas on the motocross track going through the cave, you know, um, just certain little, like the Talladega style, huge ass big corner, the track content is definitely a major aspect of this game, the way they made these tracks more down the fun factor, big jump, you know, that whole side of it definitely does add something to this game. And you're always playing this game of, it kind of feels like it's it's hard to perfectly land a jump. Like, it's, it's like there's so many ways to land a jump and not land it perfectly in this game, right? It's not one of those kind of games where it feels like you're just on the gas everywhere and you just automatically basically land everything, you know, just about perfect when you stay on the gas everywhere. That's not really what this game is. This game doesn't have a actual dedicated seat bounce button per se, right? Not like it was in... Um, all out, obviously you could change it, um, you could either have it on or off, but, um, it's not like your, your old school style, like unleashed, untamed, it's not that kind of, that kind of a seat bouncing mechanic, I would almost say it's a little more akin to reflexes seat bounce mechanic, so it's not like a full blown button, but it's still kind of there, you still kind of know that they're is a seat bouncing sort of mechanic you do with leaning a certain way, but not just flicking the thumbstick. You know, it's kind of a different different level. Um, that's what Legends has. It's not it's not like the old school, super old school MX vs. ATV games. It's more like Reflex in that particular category, which is really cool. Because um, sometimes it feels like you just lean properly. There's all these like extra air mechanics going on where you can really drag out your leaning forward in the air and it'll extend you down the jump face a little bit more. Um, there's there's all these like different next level, more so acrobatical sort of mechanics going on in the game, it seems like. But um, yeah, I know some people may be thinking, why is there not as many ruts in the corners and stuff like that? To be honest with you, this game has a completely different kind of like in the corner feel than all out had to it with the more sliding mechanic that this game has in the power sliding that's happening very frequently right um it, it's it's got more of that car drifting 
you know, game almost going around the corners for you kind of feeling more so than the stay straight all the way and then dig into a rut and go around the corner in the rut. Like with the physics of this game, it wouldn't even matter that much how ruddy the corner was. If it's not a giant rut, you, that ass end will just go bounce right up out of that rut like it's not even really there unless it's ginormous, right? So that's a bit of a bizarre element to it. I don't know how that's going to play into the Lucas Oil Pro motocross tracks in the game, but um, yeah, it almost has like a, a a Trials, you know that game, right? They made like 25,000 renditions of it. It almost has like a Trials um, gravitational pull landing BMX style uh, going down a mountain on a mountain bike you know, sliding your ass in on a mountain bike. It's like that combined with a dirt bike. That's what the physics of this game, that's what the sliding mechanic feels like. It's more like you're on a mountain bike. You know, uh, some of the trail modes literally kind of feel like you're you're on more of a trialsy, y um, you know, trials revolution, <laughs> you know, some shit kind of bike than you are like a dirt bike, which is a a, a interesting touch to this game. I think it definitely separates the game, makes it feel kind of different than a lot of the other ones. Um, but yeah, I was, you know, I feel like the game is good. It's not great, but it's good. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I personally, yeah, everything's not perfect, but I love the, I love the pop-off system. I like the fact that there's so many different things that can happen when you come up short. Like you can come up short on a jump and it can almost flip you over, but then you save it. There's times where it'll almost look like it's almost going to flip you over and then you can't save it. There's times where you just pop off instantly. There's times where you land and you think you're about to pop off. Your guy like fucking, he fucking cowls over a little bit. Like, like he hit a 300 foot jump and just racked his sack, right? He, he kind of like, like he's grabbing down at something or, or whatever. Like he's hurt and it actually slows you down a little bit, but you don't fully pop off. Almost like back in reflex when you would get that quick time event, but like it basically just hits the button for you. You don't have to hit it and you're not going to crash. You're just going to lose a little bit of time for coming out short on something. So all these extra little levels and layers and mechanics are pretty cool. And just with all the different biomes and the, it, it, it definitely is giving it its, its own kind of feeling. Yeah, so basically the sounds are... Uh, exactly copy and pasted from All Out, if I'm not mistaken, but they're just shitty on top of that. They don't match what you're doing on the bike, like with the throttle. It, the sound doesn't match what you're doing, so it feels really weird. So, Spency Boy, Space Boy, Galaxy Boy, t and Rip, and New Balance, Daddy Vibin, 125 Yamaha Chevy sliding... What's what's going on here? What's the verdict? What's your final, you know, answer to all this shit? So, yeah, I mean, um, there's no doubt about it. It is super arcadey, and I'll say it again. It's super arcadey. When I mention two of the most arcadey dirt bike games out there in the, you know, recent, you know, decade history or whatever, right... When I mentioned the first official Monster Energy Supercross game and the MUD official motocross game, those are two of the most arcadey, damn near mobile motocross game level, you know, for the most casual of casual dirt bike gamers. The fact that I mentioned both of those, that's what it feels like mixed with All Out. You see how it's kind of that... Uh, definitely seems more for the casual, but the one thing that does give it a little bit of like skill gap is the ginormous jumps and is the fact that you can barely land some of these jumps, even if you're wide open on a fully modified, f perfectly modified 450, hucking the bike perfectly, you know, even still doing all of those things, some of these jumps, because the tracks are made so insanely, in a good way, it, it can be very difficult to hit some of those bigger jumps, therefore being very rewarding when you hit those really big jumps. But yeah, the whole cornering mechanic and like, 
trying to hold the bike up. There, there's really not much of that because the bike just either slides, it, it either drifts, or it points and shoots. There's like not really a in-between, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, but overall, I mean, you know, like I'm saying, I, if you can find the game under $40 buy the game. If you can't find it under $40, it's probably not worth any more than that. And that was the big thing about Legends is the fact that it was like 30 something dollars on Steam. You know, that's that's a big difference than the full, you know, 59.99 price of a AAA dirt bike game. So, I can see a, I can see Legends being a lot more worth the money when it's all that that percentage off on steam versus like a you know a 60 dollar price tag okay guys so that's about all i can fit into one video without making it 420 minutes long you know what i'm saying uh we gotta wrap this bitch up dude. you know what i'm saying dude <laughs> um so either way all in all i think it's better than supercross 5 better than all out still has its flaws weird laggy buggy weird shit going on gameplay is fun big jump old school style track designs little bit weird arcadey mobile game style sliding system but like you know arcadey but fun realistic but unrealistic it's it's just a little little bit of everything you know what i'm saying uh it's got a little bit of everything man but i think if if you were a fan of all out i think it's worth playing for sure you know not, man, I mean, like I say, if you can get it for just a decent deal, like as long as you're not paying, like I'm saying, over 60, 70 bucks for just the base version, as long as you ain't doing that, I mean, I feel like it's pretty much worth it, man. It's pretty much worth it, man. So either way, dude, appreciate you guys watching all the videos. Uh.